what about you? What about someone kills your family member and you're saying that, oh, it's fine, they only kill my family, they still deserve a second chance. You can't say that. Well, at least I wouldn't say that. Judges are humans too. What gives the judges power to sentence other people to death? Isn't that with that as well? If we go into the extremes now, even though for like other sentences, judges are still punishing other people that he didn't even know who are they anyways. Hi guys, welcome to the net new episode of the debaters. Hey, welcome. Topic of the debate today is on death penalty. Oh, I like, I like. Anyways, if you have not subscribed to our channel, we will donate one pound, which is equivalent to six ringgit, to the charity of our choice for each subscriber we get from this video. So if you have not subscribed to our channel today, do it now. Yeah, let's briefly move on to the boring part. So a very brief history about death penalty. Throughout the history, various methods have been used, such as hanging, crucifixion, oh, die, die like how Jesus dies, burning at stake and electric chairs. Do <laughs> you feel electric? I don't know what to reply to that. So right now, up until 2023, there are 55 countries that are actually still implementing death penalty. And now let me tell you one very recent news that happened with death penalty in Malaysia is that the mandatory death penalty is officially abolished on 5th July 2023. It has been abolished through the passing of the abolition of mandatory death penalty act 2023. So does that, does that mean there's no death penalty at all in Malaysia anymore? No, we still have death penalty. So what mandatory death penalty means that if you are found guilty of a crime, you will get a death penalty. For example, if your friend passes you a package of drugs for you to carry it to another country, and if you don't know there's drugs inside the package, if you get caught at the airport, and even if you tell the police that, oh no, it's not my package, my friends actually pass it to me, I don't even know there's drugs inside the package, but the police will not listen to you. You are considered commit a crime of drug trafficking and don't really care if that package is yours, you don't really care if the drug is yours, as long as you carry it, you are involved in drug trafficking, if you are involved in drug tra trafficking, you get that penalty, as easy as that. But now, since the mandatory death penalty is already abolished, that the judge can now consider various factors. Like for example, you might be just too stupid to believe your friend too much without checking what's inside the package. Lah. Or the judge might think, hmm, maybe death penalty is too much. Maybe it'll just send you to the jails for 50 years. No, I'm just joking. But the judge can actually take into consideration of different stuff. For example, your age, your stability, your friends, things like that. But the judge actually thinks that mm, maybe death penalty is not for you and it will substitute the death penalty with something else. For example, putting you in prison for a few years. So after all, the judge can decide whether you die or you live. Life or Torito. You know, don't let Jason be the judge. He supports death penalty. And now it comes to the fun part of the video again, which is which is a debate on whether the death penalty should be abolished. And the first topic of the day, which is... Well, actually it is not. For instance, when in one of the cases, say the name please, I can't pronounce that name. Chiang Guo Qing. Yes, uh, that name. He was executed in Taiwan in the 1997 after being convicted of sexually abusing and murdering a five years old kid. That's and a pedophile. And in 2011, guess what? The Taiwan's Ministry of Justice admitted that... What's his name again? Uh, Chiang Guo Qing. Yeah, has been executed in error. So he's not really a pedophile after all. But the government only claimed his name after 14 years. That's, exactly. That's a very long time actually. Exactly. And this kind of error is irreversible. Because you're already executed. The person is already dead. Like, you can't correct that. How, how are you going to correct that? You can't do anything. It is a very solid point, I do agree with you with that. And this is definitely the case we all don't want to happen. But we all know that the criminal justice system can never be perfect. This kind of stuff actually happened in a lot of countries. For example, 
US, even though United States, some of the states are still implementing death penalty right now. Yeah. And in today's society, but I believe that the technology we have right now, for example, with the DNA testing, with the forensic tools we have today, it is almost impossible to execute the wrong person. What do you think about that? Keyword, almost. It's not exactly impossible, it's just almost impossible. Plus, technology is improving at a daily basis. You know, people from 10 years ago, they think that the technology 10 years ago was really very good. But then, looking back 10 years from now, obviously we think that the technology today is a lot better than 10 years from now, isn't it? For in the opposite to rebut your point, my personal opinion is that by keeping the criminals alive and sending them back into the society, I think the danger that they bring to the society is actually a lot bigger than the chance of sending the wrong person to death penalty. So if you actually balance between two possibilities, I believe that it will be better if the criminal is executed. <laughs> so basically what he's trying to say is that Ning Hoza Cho, Pat Hao Fong Go. Well, if you balance between two possibilities, then yeah, I would rather do that. That's pretty much what the kings do back then. And that's the reason why most of the countries, they abolish monarchy systems. And those that monarchy system still remains, they do not handle cases anymore. <laughs> Used to be the norm, but it's not anymore. <laughs> But in order to improvise that, I think I've come up with a very creative idea. Maybe not very creative, lah. but a good way to solve all these problems is that, well, for example, if the person is found guilty of the offence, but we can actually push the death sentence to 5 to 10 years later, so that the criminal can take that 5 to 10 years to find new evidence, to appeal, or to overturn the death penalty. Or maybe in, five, in the next 5 to 10 years, a new law will actually come into force, and a whole new situation will come in. And they can appeal again. And that brings us to the second perspective of death penalty, which is... Well, I believe that we as humans, we all make mistakes. So like, some of us actually need a second chance. Well, some of the people that committed a crime, aka murder in, in this case, well, they might have done it by mistake or they just couldn't control their temper. Or there might be a situation where, you know, sad stories happens and there's no other ways just to, you know, but to kill. Yeah, with all this, you know, people that have done mistakes like that, who knows they've really regretted for what they've done, even right after they have murdered. And there are researchers indicating that, you know, for most of the normal people, and I'm trying to say the normal people, not serial killers, normal people do have a very big negative impact towards, you know, them mentally after murders. And I think these kind of people deserve a second chance. Well, if someone is a serial killer, then sorry lah, I'm, I'm, I'm for death penalty then. Well, that's a solid point as well, that I do think that people deserve a second chance, but obviously that depends on what kind of situation they are in. So I suppose that we deserve a second chance after we've done a mistake, but we all need a second chance. As humans, we all make mistakes, and most of the time we all learn through mistakes. But we are talking about murder right now. For example, if they commit a less serious crimes, like stealing something from the store, well, I, I really think that they should deserve a second chance because there's a less serious crime. But we're talking about murder right now. They killed someone, this and, I, really. and I think murder is an offence that the criminal that should not have a second chance. It's just that murder is a very heinous offence. They killed someone, they take someone's house life. And how is it fair for the family of the victim who actually lost their loved ones? What about you? What about someone kills your family member and you're saying that, oh, it's fine, they only kill my family, they still deserve a second chance. You can't say that. Well, at least I wouldn't say that. And that person shouldn't deserve a second chance at all. And is it really fair to the family that the murderer deserve a second chance and the murderer being out there living his life happily when they deserve from the pain from losing their loved one for the rest of their life? How is it really fair to them? Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much true. Well, you mean, you, because of it is not fair for the victim's family, you win this point again. Because we all love our family. And that brings us to the third perspective of that penalty yeah, and the final part. Thank you for watching. I do this part. Appreciate it. But the third point is... Well, we know that there are a lot of human rights lawyers actually speak about this, saying that death penalty actually violates human rights. But you can take the point. Well, it's not only about human rights lawyers. It's actually a lot of people in the society, especially those that actually promote human rights. But yeah, viewers, let me 
let me know if you guys cite me when I when I say this statement. Judges are humans too. What gives the judges power to sentence other people to death? Isn't that with that as well? If we go into the extremes now, even though for like other sentences, judges are still punishing other people that he didn't even know who are they anyways. In my opinion, I feel like if we collectively elect a judge out, that if the judge punish us, I mean punish us, we might be able to tolerate that because we like that we sort of authorize, like give them authority to do it. It just works like governments, like we elect a government by general election when they make laws or when they punish us. <laughs> someone, someone. So are you saying that we need another election to select yes. the judges? Oh, wow. well, How many elections it, well, actually? It, it, it works like juries then. <laughs> well, we don't have juries on Asia. Yeah, exactly. The jury system is abolished. Anyway, there, there are pros and cons that way. But I'm trying to, you know, emphasize the pros of it. If we elect the judges, like how we elect the juries and how we elect the, the government, then maybe it will make us feel better. It will make us feel like we are respected. It will make us feel like human rights are not violated. Given a, 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 a good example, uh, you know, our parents give gave birth to us. And sometimes we just make mistakes or like be a bit disrespectful to our parents. And our parents give us small punishments like a small whipping or a small slap. And then we're there shouting already. Ah, this is child abuse! But watch the video on top of that that we actually mentioned about the child abuse in our last yeah, video. Like, so if you are wondered about what it might amount to child abuse, especially in the Asian family, well, I'm sure that you get cane, you get beat by your parents before. So if you are wondered about that, check the video out. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, speaking of that, we already say that stuff like, oh, this is child abuse, this is violation of human rights. So what about when it comes to church? Judge doesn't even know us. Well, I think that's a pretty solid point. But in my personal opinion, I think that keeping criminals who commit the most serious crimes actually cheapens human life. <laughs> because it belittles whatever crime they have committed. Well, imagine if you commit a murder, if you murder someone, and you get the same punishment or sentence as other less serious crimes. For example, stabbing. Wouldn't that actually belittle murder and thereby cheapen human life? So, for example, if you stab someone or if you murder someone, and feel like, well, you're getting the punishment, so why not just murder someone rather than stabbing someone? I wouldn't use the word same punishment, it's similar punishment. Similar punishment, but, but, it's not, it's but not example, if, punishment. You, if you murder someone and you only get imprisonment for like 20 30 years, I don't think that's fair. If you murder someone, you should get a death penalty. That's what I mean. And that's, stabbing is not 20 years. Stabbing is not 20 years, yeah. But I've been taught by the society that we must pay for what we did. And the more serious the crime, or well, the more serious the punishment should be. So if you murder someone, it makes perfect sense for you to get death penalty, including you who are watching the video. Well, I know you won't murder someone, uh, but still, that's the fact. That's the law. At this point, we all know that he likes the Hammurabi code, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hammurabi code, I say correctly. Nice. Yeah, so I can't really fight that point. But I still think, in this point, I, I think my point is strong enough to fight yours. Ready, go! Anyways, let's summarize uh, what we've said. I said that judges are humans as well. So what makes judges have you know more power to sentence other people to death penalty? Jason saying that murder is murder. To fight my point, he says that although it might seem like they have violated human rights by executing the defendant, but then again, it is also violating human rights of the victims itself if the murderer is not sentenced to death. Exactly. For example, if you murder someone and you can still have your happy life and all, even though you are in the prison, but it doesn't mean that prison is a bad place. They are enjoying their life in the prison. Go for coffee in the morning. Anyways, you guys do let us know who wins the debate. <laughs> and Comment, comment. Yeah, comment down there. Let us know what do you guys think. Thank you for joining us today so please give us a like if you like the video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the notification bell ding, ding. so you will never miss out on any of our future videos and back to the point where we said in the beginning of our video if you subscribe to this channel today we will donate one pound or equivalent to six ringgit to the charity of our choice so anyways the debaters stay curious stay open-minded and stay excited for our next video see ya Baby shark to do 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 baby shark to do 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 do